So first of all, thank you for your time. I really do appreciate it. And I wanted to know, you know, how you're doing, how you're holding up with, oh my gosh, everything that's going on, the pandemic and, 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 and everything. How are you doing? Oh, well, you're nice to ask. Uh, I feel really lucky. I am not sick. Um, I have some older family members. They are not sick. We yeah. are safe. Um, my heart breaks for all of the people who are suffering right now. And I feel very angry about a few other things. Yes. But on the whole, I am grateful. Yeah. Thank God. And, and same here. Can't complain. Well, thank you for your film, because if anything, it's going to lighten the mood a little bit for us and give us a little bit of just an escape, which I think we all need right now. <laughs> Don't you feel that way? <laughs> We had always hoped that the movie would provide just a little bit of a respite from the craziness of the world. And I, I think a, as much as you feel uncomfortable talking about yourself while everything else is happening, I, I can recommend a good laugh. I like, yeah. I like being able to do that. I, I completely agree. You just can't um, immerse yourself too much in the bad. You need, you need a break. You really, you yeah. really do. And this gives you one. So I really have so much to ask you about this because I have my own feelings about influencers and social media people and everything. And I want to know first off how you got involved with the project. You met up with the, with the filmmakers. And then not only did you decide to be in it, but you took on the job as executive producer. So take me down that road and how it all came to be. I mean, it pretty much happened over lunch. I, okay. I know Laura and Danielle, it was really easy. I know Laura and Danielle um, as friends. I've done a couple of interviews for their site, The New Potato. And over the years, we became, we became friendly, dinners and whatnot. And I, I've always really liked them. And Laura sent me the script. And she said, Steph, I want you to read the script and tell me what you think. And when a friend of yours says that, you always think, oh, no. Because if I don't like it, I'm going to have to say, I, I respect your vision. And I, I, I want what's best for you creatively or whatever it is you're going to have to come up with that sounds like you're supportive but don't want to be anywhere yeah. near it of course and then yeah just just wow that's great um and i <laughs> loved it i thought it was so funny yeah. and i told her that and i said you know if you if you see a role in it for me let me know because i'll pretty much work for free and she said well actually i'd like for you to be dr miriam spicelli and i thought oh yes that's great and then she said and if you have any friends we're also looking for producers we don't mean to be pushy but if you and any if you know anyone who wants to be involved and it's funny that very morning i had received a check for something. And it was the exact amount as the co-executive producer status or what. And I thought, wow, why invite a bunch of other people into this? If I am lucky enough to be able to say yes to this now, let's just do it the three of us. Well, so, it was meant uh, to be. Yeah. By the end of lunch, it was, it was a done deal. Oh, good. Well, I hope you had drinks too. <laughs> yeah, we no, we didn't. We were at some, I mean, perfectly delicious, very <laughs> healthy restaurant that had like a bunch of flavored water. I was like, yeah, all right. We, okay. we, we did raise a glass later elsewhere. Good stuff, good stuff. So the, the premise of this is very, very interesting because it's a mockumentary, first of all, in the style, people who don't know what mockumentary is, it's in the style of like a Christopher Guest type of film. And it's really interesting because it gives you the leeway to kind of really poke fun at these people without being <laughs> too mean, I guess, you know? But I, you know, listen, I use social media, of course, I use it mostly to promote my, my work um, and the cooking I've been doing over this pandemic, you know, seriously, but I, I don't take myself all that seriously. But obviously, a lot of people do. And so I wanted to know from your perspective, when you guys kind of did this deep dive into starting shooting this and, and you know, or even with the script, were you nervous? Were you worried about people being, you know, attacked? Like just your feelings about that kind of stuff. You know, we weren't nervous because we, you know, I don't think it, I don't think it's a mean spirited film. I think no. it pokes yeah. fun at, yeah, it's not nasty. Um, and the truth is we all recognize someone in all of those characters. So I don't think we're talking about anything that we don't already kind of all know. Yeah. And it, I thought it was refreshing to be able to talk about it without having to, um, without having to pretend that I enjoyed it so much. <laughs> you know, I, I don't. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have such a love-hate relationship with social media. I love it and I love to hate it. So I, it was good to be able to give voice to that. Yeah, and um, do you think personally that people on, you know, influencers or people on social media, are they narcissists or are they driven by the money that they can make? 
you know what? Do you mind repeating that question again? You just, you cut out. Oh, not a problem. Do you yeah, feel you. that, that social media influencers or anybody who, you know, is really on social with, mm -hmm. with, a, with a lot of followers, do you think that they are narcissists or are they driven by the money that they make from it? You know, I don't know. I mean, who am I to judge anybody? A girl's got to make a living, right? Like I'm on social media talking about my movie. Sure. Um, and it, there's no question that it is a part of a, it's the new advertising. I mean, it's a significant part yeah. of promoting anything. Um, I have, I mean, I'm a person who's taken more than a few selfies where I've then gone in and edited it and looked at it and thought, oh, I could do this, I could do this. Um, I must be doing it because I'm a total narcissist and I want to look good. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, of course. No, of <laughs> but nobody's course. paying me for yeah. it and I think yeah. I'd rather be paid. Yeah. Um, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't say what the motivation is, but I can say it's working. Yeah. Somehow, in, in many ways, it's working. Absolutely. Listen, and this therapist that you pay, that you play in the film, she's a riot because she's not that good. <laughs> oh, she's so bad. She is such a fatuous idiot. She's the least helpful. Mo I, and I suspect she wants to be a social media star herself. Right. I, I get this feeling that she wants to be really famous, too. And those kind of people are always super dangerous. Um, they never care about anything. That's <laughs> exactly right. Yeah. So I really enjoyed playing her because she's so incompetent. Yeah, she does. Yeah, she's a riot to watch. Um, for you, I, I mean, just just working on this um, as a, as an executive producer, was there things that you learned? You know, that you um, you know, things that you didn't anticipate. You know, something that you learned and you would take with you for the next time. Yes, I would say I I learned two things. It is wonderful to be able to organize a set along with Laura and Danielle, of mm -hmm. course. I did not do this by myself. Sure. Uh, where things run really smoothly, ego free. We cut, we, grab, we wrapped early every day. Uh, we were under budget, on time. I mean, it was, it was like what happens when, like, like imagine a bunch of moms getting together and doing something. Like it just, it just ran real smooth. It gets you know, done. Had, it gets done. Yeah. It gets done. And there's no time for squabbling over here because we got to get done. I just, it gets done. And I loved that. Yeah. Um, what I did not love was there was a whole week where we were editing the movie and from start to finish, six days in a row, I had to watch. I loved watching everybody else, but then it would mm. come to my scenes and I hate watching myself on camera. I mean, I hate it. Really? So there I am. And I just, I was chewing a pencil and I was like, who, who hired this person? She sucks. She's so bad. Oh, please. And I, I would fast forward through it. And my husband said, you can't do that. You yeah. have to watch it. So um, that was not terribly pleasant. But aside from that, it was great. Yeah. And you, you got a great cast in this too. And especially, um, you know, some of the, you know, the bigger names in it, like Richard Kahn, you know, yeah, 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 you did. Like, were they friends of yours or were, or did, how did they get involved? We call them the grownups. Yeah. Them, I'm one of the grownups and Laura said, you're halfway. Like, okay. <laughs> well, I know Richard, we're both alumni, alums of the same school. So we've yes. seen each other in a couple of different things. And then Deborah Jo, I, I did a reading with her, Jackie, I didn't know. And Peter, mm -hmm. I didn't know, but we had a good connection of people you know we knew enough people who knew enough people yeah and it worked and and like i say it's so much fun to watch this and uh I, yeah people watch it it's it's just really really funny um i have to yeah I, no problem i really really enjoyed it i had a really good laugh i have to say um because it pokes fun at a lot of people that i personally know and i just like <laughs> I, 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 I kind of want to just like put it give them the link and go maybe you yeah. should watch this yeah absolutely uh -huh. Mm -hmm. I they can't look familiar. Yeah, really. Um, I can't leave without talking about a few of your past um, accomplishments, of course. And you know, so many years on Law, Law and Order SVU. I mean, come on. And and what's really interesting about a show like that is because it's running so long, and because people can now access it from like people who've never seen it before can now you know find it on streaming services from day one, from like when you were on it and recognize you in a whole new light from, you know, from a fresh start, uh, from uh -huh. you know, a new perspective. What's that like for you as an actor? You know, you, 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 you moved on, you left the show, but it was such a huge part of your life. So when people stop you on the street, you know, what is that like? Oh man, it is such a compliment. It is so wonderful to be a part of a show that has a kind of longevity. Yeah. And it is so wonderful to be a part of a show personally. I think a lot of us who are on the show felt this way to be a part of a kind of a, a sea change in the dialogue around violence and sexual violence. I really oh. believe that SVU is a huge part of, of cracking that open. And I'm really proud. 
to be a part of that. And, um, you know, how many actors get to, you know, I get to go back and forth. So how many people get to grow up with a, with a role in real time, the way I've been able to do it's, it's such a gift. Yeah, I'm sure. It is really such a good show. And I, I kind of was late to the party on that show because I just watched so much television. But once I did, uh -huh. like I, I, I could, I was so hooked and I love the fact that it was so carefully written and, and carefully uh -huh. acted. And really, it really has made an impact on society, I, I think. So. Yeah, I think it has. I really do. You know, I was 24 when I started yeah. that show. And, and I went back what was it last year or two years ago? It was 43. Yeah. And I thought how, how, how much the conversation around this whole subject has become much more open, much more pointed. People are much more accountable. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah, I, I really do. I agree with you. So what else do you have in your back pocket? Do you have any other, other things that we're going to see you coming well, up? In? <laughs> I was supposed to start shooting a movie for Lifetime in Canada in April. And I suspect that will happen. I think it's just postponed like yeah. anything. It's a little up in the air. And I am going to be able to do some voiceover for a show called Solar Opposites that just cool. dropped on Hulu. It's really funny. Oh, cool. Um, I, I liked it. The first season just dropped in its entirety. And so I'll be doing some VO for the second season. Oh, good stuff. Now, all those Lifetime movies are shot in Toronto. That's where I'm calling you from. So is that where oh, you... you know, this one was big, is, uh, was Winnipeg. Okay, that's Peg. okay. Yeah, Winter Peg. Mine told me it's called. <laughs> so, you know... Maybe we'll shoot in September and that yeah. would be maybe slightly warmer. I was going to say, because if, if it does start shooting like December through February, March, you might want to ask them to postpone it a little bit for you. you know, <laughs> I went to school in Chicago and I was like, I think this is the coldest I've ever been. And then somebody told me about Winnipeg and I was like, no, I bet that's going to be the coldest I've ever been. <laughs> it's cold, but it's also a great city. There's no question yeah. about it. Listen, Stephanie, thank you so much for your time. It was such a thank pleasure to talk much. to you. And uh, good luck with the social ones and everything else. And uh, we, of course, we welcome you to Canada with open arms whenever you want. Ah. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I look forward to being there. Okay. Thanks so okay. much. And have a great day. You too. Take okay. care. Okay. Bye-bye.